Hey everyone, Alex here and welcome to episode 4 of my Dota 2 beginner guide series, this one entitled, How to Carry. In this video we're going to be discussing the fundamentals to how to be an effective carry in Dota 2, as well as giving you some, uh, some practical examples in game later in the video. Let's get started. Before we begin, we should come to an understanding of what a carry in Dota 2 really is. A carry in Dota 2, quite simply, is someone that is expected to carry the team on their shoulders, hence the role name. Uh, essentially, they rely on golden items in order to be successful in a match of Dota 2. And uh, they tend to start off really weak, okay? They need help in the laning stage, that's why they're often paired with supports, and well, in mid, in mid's case, they kind of stay by themselves. But generally speaking, your strongest, hardest carries, your position 1s, are accompanied by a position 5 support, and that's for a particular reason, because they start off weak and they need to be babysat. A well-farmed carry is often characterized as being the hero that is not only the hardest to kill on the opposing team, but also the one with the greatest kill potential. So it's very important that you, they get the farm they need because they can be the scariest hero in the game when it comes right down to it. When you're pushing the Ancient, you're trying to finish the game off and get that dub, it's your carry that is often the one that is leading the charge. Now, who are the carries of Dota? There are currently 65 heroes with the carry tag associated with them. Now, there are a whole bunch of different categories of carry, okay? Uh, the most important ones that you need to understand for the purpose of this video is positions 1 and 2. Those are the, the positions, as I mentioned in a previous video, that do require the most farm in Dota 2. Now, there are position 3 and 4 heroes that can transition into semi-carries depending on the game situation. That is why you see someone like Bristleback being identified by Dota 2's client as a potential carry. You're not going to position 1 Bristleback. But if Bristleback happens to get a few kills in, in the off lane and starts to ramp up and snowball a bit, suddenly he can become absolutely terrifying, okay? Hard carries. Hard carries, you often hear that term, and that is often associated with the position one hero. Your hard carry is the, is the hero that requires the most farm to be successful. When we talk about farm, that's a term I've used a few times now. Farm is essentially the resources available on the map. The gold and the experience, and of course the runes as well. Gold and experience are the two primary sources of farm. Now where you get your farm is from the neutral creeps, the creep waves, and from enemy heroes. The way you kind of pull that farm out is from last hitting creep waves, last hitting neutral creeps, and well, getting kills on heroes, right? It is very, very important that you understand that um, you generally want to ensure you're getting as much farm as possible as a position one carry, okay? One thing I should mention is that agility-based heroes in Dota 2 tend to be the hardest carries in the game. The reason for that is because agility has an impact as a stat on your attack speed. When you're an agility-based hero, not only are you gaining attack speed, you're gaining, gaining attack damage, which has a very significant impact on your damage per second, or DPS. So the result is that you have heroes that can do a tremendous amount of damage very, very, very quickly. They tend to be a little squishy because they don't have the strength for the, uh, the health, but heck, they can do a whole lot of damage very quickly. Position 2 is your mid lane carry, okay? Now we've spoke about uh, lanes a little bit before, and I, I was on the previous slide as well, but it bears worth mentioning, okay? So basically, your position 1 is going to be in the safe lane at the bottom with your position 5 carry. Your position 5 carry is going to make sure that they are, um, you know, protecting your, uh, your safe lane carry. They're also going to be getting denies and ensuring that you're getting last hits, and they're going to be harassing the off laners as best they can. In mid, the mid laner benefits from increased experience gain because they're 1v1, okay? That is often a good opportunity for a mid laner to kind of get, uh, get an ultimate with a lot of kill potential. You know, Queen of Pain, Zeus, Viper is a good example of this as well. Viper's, uh, uh, Viper Strike has tremendous kill potential early in the game. So, um, you know, the mid lane uh, hero is very, very, very uh, susceptible to kind of getting that high experience gain, moving into another lane and getting a kill, okay? Now, one thing I should say is that the mid lane, if you're going to be playing mid lane, it's very important that you practice your last hitting and denying because this is absolutely imperative as a mid laner that you are good at last hitting. And that's the same, uh, same thing for position one. You got to be able to last hit effectively in order to be successful as a carry in this game. There's, there's no other way around it. You have to last hit. Okay, you absolutely have to. Now we, we kind of hinted at semi carries before. Some heroes, it's particularly the off lane heroes, the position three and four, they can transition into semi carries late in the game depending on the game situation. 
Bristleback is a perfect example of that as a position three, and Lena is a position four hero that can uh, can that can generally transition into a semi carry as well. Lena is a nuker. She can do a tremendous amount of damage with her spells and her ultimate Laguna Blade. So let's say she gets a couple of early kills in the early part of the game. Maybe she builds an Agnums. It's a little greedy, but let's say she does it. It amplifies her kill potential because Laguna B uh, Blade now does pure damage and it's that much uh, more lethal. So suddenly you're in a situation where now the other teams really got to look out for, for Lu uh, Lena because she does so much damage. So that's an example of how Lena can transition into a semi carry. And Bristleback can do the same. You know, if he gets a heart of Tarask or if he gets, you know, Blade Mail, he's going to get, but uh, gets a heart of Tarask and suddenly becomes this unkillable beast that's quill spraying everyone all the time. Suddenly. He's not such a squishy offlaner anymore, is he? He's, he's actually a terrifying sight. I want to talk about this very quickly. Uh, I want to just... When I talk about very specific hero guides, we'll get into this more specifically. But I want to kind of seed this idea in your head that some carries are farm-centric and others are fight-centric, okay? And what I mean by that... Now, we have all the carries uh, identified uh, by, by role in the game here. And... I just highlighted a few that you're perhaps interested in trying as a relatively new player. Now you might be saying, Alex, why is Anti-Mage a, far a farm priority hero, whereas someone like a Faceless Void or a Juggernaut is a fight priority? What I mean by this is that, let's say you get to level 6 in, in lane with a an Anti-Mage. He doesn't represent that much of a kill threat yet, does he? Level 6, he's not bad. He Maybe he catches someone, gets a kill, maybe the, the, you're getting great support. You know, and uh, they're able to lock him down and you get a kill. But realistically, these heroes are not early kill threats. They're not. Drow Ranger can very easily get bullied in the early game, okay? PA's uh, the same, right? Spectres is, is known as being one of the hardest carries in the game, yet needs to be babysat in the safe lane. These heroes need the farm. They're not going after kills. What changes, though, is someone like Faceless Void. At level 6, he gets Chronosphere. Chronosphere is an incredible team fight ability, and it's one that can lock down a unit for a kill. So suddenly, when you're level six as a faceless void, you can start looking for ganks. You can start saying, "Okay, who's vulnerable here? Is he vulnerable? I can chrono, uh, Chronosphere." Um, and if there is a team fight occurring, say like if someone's moving, there's a team fight. Chronosphere is a very valuable ability in a team fight. So if you're a faceless void, you want to chase those fights. Uh, Omni Slash is the same way. Omni, Omni Slash has great kill potential at level 6, okay? Slark's the same. At level 6, he becomes invisible. He does a tremendous amount of work. He can be very difficult to kill, and it's an escape, okay? Uh, Ursa has, a kill, has kill potential from level 2. Laguna Blade on Lina is absolutely capable of killing somebody. Eclipse is a great team fight ability. Uh, Doom from Doom, ironically, is one of the best single-target disables in the entire game. So suddenly you're in a situation where if you're level 6 with any of these carries and there's a fight happening, you better be there because they can really help your team. But if you're Naga Siren, no, get in the jungle, get farm, get stronger because you're not going to help. Anti-Mage is not going to help in a team fight situation. He's better off getting the farm. So it's very important that you understand, and I'll cover this again when I do very specific hero guides, whether they're farm priority or fight priority. But it's very important you kind of get that seed in your head now so you can understand how you approach the overall meta game of a match of Dota 2. Now, farming speed is the single most important differentiator between low rank players and high rank players. So it's extremely important that you understand what farming speed is and how you can improve it, okay? As a carry, you always want to be maximizing your farm. You always want to be getting more gold faster. GPM is gold per minute. This is the most important metric for you, okay? By far the most important metric in the game if you're going to be carrying at all. Position 1, 2, even 3, okay? Gold per minute. The way you increase your farm speed is to last hit effectively. You need to use items effectively. You need to use abilities effectively. And you need to transition from lane to jungle and back to increase your farm rate. Now the fourth one comes with experience. That's something I can show you, but realistically, you have to get a feel for the game. That is something, this right here is the hardest. This is the big difference between the high rank and the low rank right here. Being able to transition from jungle and back in order to maximize farming potential. Don't go to the jungle early because there's a way more farm available in lane. Let's talk about these specifically. Last hitting. It is incredibly important that you learn how to last hit effectively. If you know you're going to do anti-mage, you like anti-mage, or you like juggernaut, get into the last hit trainer and focused on learning the last hit, okay? 
Every hero has unique backswing, unique, unique attack animations. It's very important that you learn it. Every creep you miss is, a, is farm wasted. Gold you'll never get back, okay? It's very important as this, in this example here. You see this hero, you see this? I get the last hit. My next priority is not the deny. I'm not trying to beat down a deny. I gotta get this, this last hit here. And then I get the deny, and then I go after the, the range creep. Range creeps are worth more, by the way. As a general rule of thumb, it's very important you understand, and if you're a support player too, you gotta understand this, okay? This is a huge issue. If you are a carry, you are responsible for last hitting. Deny if, if you're capable, of course. If you are a support, do not steal last hits from your carry, okay? If you're a support, you're responsible for denying. If, of course, there is a last hit available and your carry's a melee hero and they're out of range and you know they're not going to get it, take the last hit. Take that farm. But you should not be competing for last hits with your position 1 or position 3, okay? Now, Quelling Blade is a very valuable item that'll help you to kind of gain additional attack damage to kind of reduce the range of your attack, uh, your attack kill rate, okay? So, for last hitting, you got to learn... At what health does this creep have to be at for me to kind of erase its health and kill him in one hit? That's what you want to do. If, if it's too early, you run the risk of not hitting him again before he dies. If it's too late, well, it's too late and he's dead, right? So you don't get the last hit. Last hitting is of paramount importance, guys. If you're going to carry at all, you learn how to last hit, okay? Items. There are items that can improve your farming speed. Blink Dagger is a perfect example. Now, there are some heroes that have natural, like, movement increasing abilities, right? Darkseer. You have Puck. You have, uh, you know, literally you have Blink from both Anti-Mage and the Queen of Pain. So, but other heroes might benefit from a Blink Dagger. Why? That Blink Dagger is going to help them to, from, uh, to move from the lane to farm, uh, to the jungle, sorry, and from jungle camp to jungle camp and back to the lane. That added mobility is significant. It's significant because any time you're spending running around is time you're not spending farming. You have to farm faster. In terms of items, Maelstrom and Battle Fury are two fantastic items for farming. Now, Maelstrom is almost half the cost of Battle Fury. Bear that in mind. But they have very similar uh, characteristics, and I'll show you in my gameplay example in a few minutes. But Battle Fury is used with melee heroes. You already have a Quelling Blade, so it's a natural kind of build. It increases your damage and increases HP and mana generation. But the important thing is that it cleaves. It cleaves. So it allows you to kind of take your base damage and spread it amongst the entire creep, creep wave or the entire uh, neutral camp. And you can kill them in like literally a third the time it would if you just had to attack, auto attack everyone. Maelstrom's the same. That lightning that gets released, which is kind of, uh, it, it scales super well with attack speed. That's why you see it often on like snipers and drow rangers um the maelstrom allows you to kind of activate and proc this 140 magical base damage that'll leap between all the creeps around neutral or the wave creeps and the result is you're able to cl clear those waves significantly faster you get those kills it increases your farm rate okay that's what you're after finally you have abilities abilities increase your farm rate as well we talked about the blink dagger but the anti-mage literally has blink literally has blink so the anti-mage can trade mana for farming efficiency by blinking from jungle camp to jungle camp back to lean to jungle camp to lean and can also use it as an escape right so it's very important that you utilize your abilities the best as you can kunkka is a carry and kunkka has tidebringer why did I pick Tidebringer? Because it has the exact same impact as, ba as the Battle Fury. It has a cleave. Sven's the same. Uh, Sven has a cleave ability as well. And these natural abilities allow you to clear neutral camps and waves faster. So make sure you're using your abilities to great effectiveness. Now let's see all of this practiced in-game. All right, everyone, we're in a custom lobby here just so I can show you a few examples here. So when you start, you might want to block the creep wave a bit to keep them closer to your tower. Now, I'm with a, a Warlock here, so the Warlock is the, uh, the support in this case. I want to get that last hit. I got it. Now, see, I'm moving. I'm moving. State, I'm going to get that deny if I can. Get that last hit. I got it. Deny last hitting under the tower is hard. You want to let the tower poke it and then get the last hit right at the last second. So these guys are being very passive here. So look, I had an opportunity to deny there as well, but I wanted to focus on getting that last hit. Okay, so again... That's an example of trying to, oh, yeah, okay, good deny there, buddy. Good deny there, that was good. It's exactly what your support wants to do. So in this case, I'm gonna focus on denying. 
right? Got that deny. So, oh, I should also mention, so there's a, there's, okay, I'm gonna miss a couple last hits while I explain this quickly. But there's an opportunity for you to use the stop command. So, like, for instance, you can do this where you just move around a lot and then try and click right the last second. You can do that. That is one way that you can last hit and deny. But the other way to do it is to kind of, um, to use the stop command. Now watch this. So if I approach, see how I'm like, see how I'm like, I'm kind of animating, but I'm not really attacking. That is because I'm right clicking the hitting the S button right as I'm about to launch my attack. That allows me to kind of adjust it so that all I got to do is I'm clicking, clicking. Once I release the S button, it allows me to kind of push my auto attack through. And uh, it allows me to kind of get better control over my last hit and deny. Now, right there was a mistake. I should have been focusing in on the, the last hit, not the deny. But I'm trying to explain. So, again, if you use, if you also just right click a lot, it kind of does the same thing. But I find it much easier. And you kind of get used to it using the stop command. Watch this. We'll do it again. Jittering, jittering. And, got, oh, the, the warlock sniped the deny on me. Good job, buddy. But anyways, that is a good example of, uh, you know, what you would want to do in, uh, in a game situation. Again, these guys are being relatively passive. I should talk about the items I picked. I will be talking about, now we're pushing the lane. So when I see something like this, okay? Now right now at level 2, it's a little too early to go to the, uh, go to the, uh, the jungle. But I'll show you what we're going to do in the jungle in just a moment here. So because I'm a melee hero, what I did was I took regeneration, so I took six tangos. This is like just, now I got tons of gold because I, I was using yes. cheats because I tried to set up the maelstrom and everything like that. But uh, at the beginning of the match, if you're trying a new hero out, now I will give item specific builds for heroes as we move on uh, in my guide series. But a good start is six tangos because you want that regeneration, you want to stay in lane. Your quelling blade because, well, that, that extra 15 this damage really helps you to get those last hits and denies, right? So you want to have that additional uh, that additional opportunity to get the last hits and denies. And uh, of course, if you, I get take the, uh, the slippers of agility. If you're like a Wraith King and you're focusing in on strength, you can take, like, of course, the equivalent, uh, which is the Gauntlet of Strength. And you can take a, uh, a Mantle of Intelligence if you're an intelligence piece hero. And then, of course, we take the Iron Branches because for 50 gold, they give us three stats. They improve our strength a little bit, and they improve our other things. So that's what we're doing there. So let's talk about blinking for a sec. So I got the blink ability with my W. So again, I'm actually level three now. So what I'm going to do, I can blink over here. So I, I see it's 32. So let's see how long it takes me to take down a cre a, cre uh, a camp here. No, I'm not going to be able to take this camp down. I'm a little weak right now. So let's see what we can do. So we'll take down the weak ones first. Now, we, have, we are mana burning, so maybe I should have focused on him first, but whatever. Oh, who died? Who died? Someone's getting kills there. Okay, so because we're an anti-mage, we are burning their mana. We're doing additional damage. But look how long it's taking. Look how long it's taking. Is that 20 seconds? Look at all the farm I'm losing. That's what I mean, that you have to make a decision as to when you want to farm and when you want to stay in lane. It would have been much better for us to stay in lane there. I need to kill these creeps faster. Okay? And there's a lot more, there's a lot more farm available and experience available here. Now, as a support, you might want to leave the, uh, I just missed that deny there. And the last things I'm talking. But, uh, you might want to leave and go over there and, like, stack and stuff just to give me the additional experience every once in a while. But realistically, right, um, you know, it's important that we stay in lane for as long as we can. Now, we're roughly the same strength here. Let's showcase what a Battle Fury does, okay? So let's put in a Battle Fury. So now we're cleaving. So we, we don't have our, our, uh, our Quelling Blade anymore. But now we have a Battle Fury. Let's actually take a look at what the Battle Fury does for us, okay? So this, this wave's going to come back up. So we'll wait outside the box. So if we're inside the box, the creeps won't respond, right? So every five minutes they respond. Here they are. They're back. They're sleeping, but watch what my Battle Fury allows me to do. You see how I'm doing cleaving damage here? That allows me to take down these creeps much more effectively. The Battle Fury significantly increases my farm speed, right? We blink over here. Look at this. Because we're, we're kind of cleaving the damage, we're taking these units down so unbelievably quickly, right? That's why Battle Fury is so important, okay? And even against creep waves, right? Against creep waves here. So let's, uh, we're a little too close to the tower. Unfortunately, our support here is pushing the lane a little bit, which is not what we want. So we take this last hit here. But what we do here is, watch this, so if I go over here, right, I can do additional damage to the entire creep wave because I'm cleaving. And that gives me a lot of kill potential, okay? Um, it, it allows me to kind of clear these waves much quicker. Now, Maelstrom's very similar, okay? And what Maelstrom allows you to do, let's get these, uh, these creeps back here. 
Okay, so we're gonna wait till six minutes. We're gonna blink in there. Here's these creeps. Maelstrom similar to Battle Fury, except it's going to create an electric field that kind of blinks between everyone and gets those kills, right? So, Battle Fury is a little more effective on a uh, on a melee hero. Uh, Maelstrom is significantly less expensive, so if you're if you're stuck in terms of like uh, gold, but look what I'm doing here, right? Yes. It allows me to kind of farm a little faster because I'm clearing these waves a little faster. And of course, because it's percentage based, if I were to be... Oh, no! I died! <laughs> it killed me. <laughs> I was so fixated on everything else. But anyways, the idea here is that you basically are using your... Uh, you know, your items to maximize your farming potential, okay? Uh, that was embarrassing. But anyways... What we're going to do here is I'm also going to show you the idea of like using your town portal scroll. So say you do die in lane. You know what it is? It's a good lesson. You die in lane. Don't run back. Don't run back. Use your teleportation scroll. Why? Why would I do that? Well, I'm doing that. Yes, they cost money. No, it's not an emergency and blah, blah, blah. But you do it because you want to get back here ASAP so that you can get that experience again. If you're dead and you're running and it takes you 35 seconds to run, that's 35 seconds where, you know, their, their off laner is getting experience that you're not getting. So it's very important that you uh, you get that farm when possible, okay? So anyways, that is roughly, you know, a good, it's a good starting point for you guys to understand what's important when you're, when you're carrying. Now, there will be times where you want to rotate, right? So if you're starting to get some farm, right, our mid here, our, uh, our, I don't know why Axe is mid right now. But there's also opportunities for you to, to rotate a bit. So we'll wait 20 seconds here so I can rotate. And I'll show you I'll show you what I mean by a rotate, right? Usually the support will roam and rotate. But uh, what you can do is once you feel like you're getting stronger. So let's say, I mean, I mentioned this before. Anti-Mage is not a hero that really benefits from being level 6. But let's say I was a Faceless Void and I got to level 6. What I probably want to do here is I would kind of go over. I'd say, all right, guys, let's do this. Let's get him. Let's get him, right? So what I do is I teleport over. Ideally, we'd have vision here. They probably have vision. And this is a good example of why you should have vision. I'll keep myself kind of, you know, in the tree so they can't really see me, right? Now, this is a, a custom lobby, right? So they don't really know. But what I can do now is I can get a gank on them, surprise them. In that case there, they were kind of running in my general direction anyways. But what you can do is you can kind of come in now. You know, there's three of us, two of them. So I know he's moving. I can still see him. I can still see him. I can still see him. I blink in front. I get a body block. Right? We try and take him down. But this Kunk is horrible. Kunk, what are you doing? But anyways, that gives you an idea of why rotating can be very valuable. But at the same time, look what happened here. We completely lost bottom. Our, uh, our Warlock had to run away. If we were someone like a Void, uh, Faceless Void, we could therefore completely lock him down and get them to secure those kills. So... You do want to pay attention to when the opportunities are arise for you to rotate and get some ganks and get some kills. You don't want to be too stationary in the lane for some heroes. Like if you're a fight centric hero, um, you, you know you want to you want to kind of move around as best you can. Faceless Void is a good example of that, as we discussed. Um, you know, uh, Ursa is a good example of that. Luna is a good example of that. Ironically, anti mage, you want to get the farm. Very a very farm focused hero. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful. The next video is going to be. How to offlane, you can see it right there on this, uh, the screen, so be sure to click it if you're interested in learning how to offlane. And guys, thank you so much for watching, and a very special thank you to all of my wonderful subscribers. Take care everyone, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful day.